Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Welcome to Mount Olive on this uh, fifth Sunday of Epiphany uh, and a cold, cold, cold crisp morning. Uh, bulletin and announcements are printed for your benefit. I think everything should be self-explanatory. A um, couple things. The ladies, LWML, is, uh, are putting together um, hygiene kits, and um, they need will need some donations of a variety of things. There's a table back there that has some samples of what they're going to be doing, what they need. You don't need to put together a whole kit. If you just have toothbrushes or bars of soap, uh, put it in the basket and they will assemble the kits. Also, you don't want to cook on Valentine's Day, do you? No. So, the youth are going to cook dinner for you. Let's put the microphone on. Let's try that. <laughs> the youth will cook dinner for you uh, and have it ready to go after the second service on Valentine's Day next Sunday. So you and your Valentine, or even just you by yourself, can have Valentine dinner. Uh, Italian, I think the plan is lasagna, is that right? And other fixings that go with it. Um, deadline is Thursday to place your order, and information is in the bulletin about how to do that. The rest of the announcements, I think, are self-explanatory. Our first hymn is Praise to the Lord the Almighty.
the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgression unto the, to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we plead for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us to knowledge of you and of your will, and through obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given His only Son to die for us, and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives the power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, because he has dealt bountifully with me. Consider me, consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say it, I have prevailed over him. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We pray together. O Lord, keep your family, the Church, continually in the true faith, that relying on the hope of your heavenly grace, we may ever be defended by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we sing, Praise the Almighty.
interpreted in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 through 31. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to dwell in, who brings princes to nothing, and makes rulers of the earth as emptiness. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows on them, and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stone. To whom then will you compare me, that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high, and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and O why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And they shall mount up with wings like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be fit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 16 through 27. If I preach the gospel, that gives me no ground for boasting, for necessity is laid upon me. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but not, but not of my own will, I am still entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my reward? That in my preaching I pre may present the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right in the gospel. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak, I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners compete, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self-control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable wreath but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly, I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after, after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the Gospel. St. Mark, chapter 1, beginning at the 23rd verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Immediately, Jesus left the synagogue and entered this house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, 
left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or oppressed by demons. And the whole city was gathered together at the door, and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. Rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And he said to them, Let us go on to the next towns, that I may preach there also, for that is why I came. And he went through all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues, and casting out demons. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified. Jesus, lover of my soul.
unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text that I have chosen for our consideration this morning is the Gospel lesson as it was read before. I'd like to read once again these words. And he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not let the demons speak because they knew him. And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him searched for him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is looking for you. And they said to them, Let us go to the next towns, that I may preach there also. For that is why I came. And he went throughout all Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is our text. Dear friends in Christ, so here is Jesus in all his authority and power demonstrating that he is more than just a man that he is also the all-powerful God of gods and Lord of lords. He has power over the physical realm, and he is able to heal the sick, and we see it firsthand as uh, he arrives at Peter's home, and there is Peter's mother-in-law, so obviously Peter was married, right? How long he had been married before Jesus calls him? And here, think of it, Jesus calls him, he leaves everyone, leaves his wife, doesn't say if they have children at this point, leaves his wife to follow Jesus, and he's basically gone for three years. Anyway, here he is at home. His mom is down in bed with a fever. And so they tell Jesus, mom, my mom's got it, my mother-in-law has a fever. He goes to her, takes her by the hand, and immediately, instantaneously, the fever leaves her, <laughs> and she gets up and starts serving them like every good mother-in-law should, right? The thing that she loved to do the most, and it's not that she needed you know, a few days for a recovery to get the strength that she needed again, but she immediately had a full recovery and began to serve Jesus and his disciples that very moment. Jesus had power over the physical realm, power over the impact of sin in that physical realm, power to heal the sick. And on top of it, Jesus demonstrated that he has power over the spiritual realm also, as he casts out demons and commands them to remain silent because they were telling everybody who he is. We read last week, week before, you are the Son of God, the Chosen One of God. And Jesus did not want that news to go out there yet. He didn't want to be bragging, he just wanted to do his job. So, healing the sick, casting out demons. And he's all the people that evening, it says at sunset, at the end of the day, or the beginning of the new day, uh, in their way of thinking, they all come and gather around at St. Peter's house, he wasn't called St. Peter yet, at the house where his mother was healed, they heard about it because it's probably a small town and everybody hears about these things in a small town. They all gather around and Jesus heals the sick 
and casts out demons over and over and over. And when it's all said and done, they all go to bed and call it a night. So, here's the question for you. If Jesus were to come to Watertown, to one of your homes, or to a home of a friend, and you hear that he's here, what would you ask of him? Would you ask for yourself physical healing, or perhaps emotional healing or spiritual healing? Would you ask for a family member, for my father, for my uncle, for my friend? who has had this problem for years and the doctors have done all, have poked and prodded and done all they can and still no results. Would you ask for spiritual healing? Now we don't talk about demon possession as in, as it took place in Jesus' day, not certainly very much as it did then. There were a lot, apparently, of people who were possessed by demons at that time. But we do talk about emotional problems, uh, about mental illness, and those kinds of things that go beyond just simply a physical issue, and perhaps you know someone, or you experience it yourself, especially in these cold, dark days of February. The depression, the uncertainties, the, the torment sometimes that comes upon you. Would you ask for a release from that? Certainly that's what the people were looking for. That's what Peter and the other disciples were wondering about when they got up in the morning. And Jesus is gone. He's just up and gone. Where could he be? Mark says, Jesus got up very early before the sun and found a quiet place to pray. After all this work, Jesus in his human nature needed that time of mental rest, emotional rest, and connection with his Heavenly Father, with our Heavenly Father. Have you ever noticed how easy it is for us to get caught up in the turmoil and, and the comings and goings and this and that and the other thing and the schedule and, and all that stuff piles up and piles up and piles up and how easy it is to just go to bed exhausted and then begin all over the next morning. But look what Jesus did. He took the time, getting up early, took the time to spend with his Father, our Father, in prayer. To be revitalized, to be strengthened, and to take his concerns, his heart, his pains, his sorrows, his joys, his victories, because think of all the victories that he had that day before. Hey, Dad, look what we did this time. Look what we did this time. The devil is fleeing. 
because the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus spent that time in prayer, but the disciples didn't get it. They wanted him come, to come back and do more. More healings, more casting out of demons, more, probably some more teaching and preaching. More of what they had already got. And Jesus said, imagine, Jesus said, no. We've got other things to do. We have other towns to go to. We've done enough in this place, now we need to move on. You see, Peter and the other disciples wanted to fit Jesus into a certain box that they had constructed, that this is what Jesus is here for. He is here to heal, he's here to cast out demons, and that's what we want him to do. And it's a wonderful thing, it truly is wonderful, as Jesus demonstrates his power over the physical and spiritual issues of our world and of that time especially. How many times have we prayed asking Jesus for exactly that kind of thing, so that he would heal and bring relief from the, sin, the effects of sin in our lives these days, especially with the coronavirus continuing to spread and go here and there around the world, in our country, in our community, even among people that we know. How many of us would not pray that Jesus would come and heal and remove the power of that virus in our lives and in our world? But Jesus, turning to his disciples, said, no, that's enough for this time and for this place. We have other places to go, and I have a more important task to carry out. Yes, I am healing and overcoming the power of sin in individual lives. But my main job, my main purpose, my main goal in being here is to overcome the power of sin in, for the lives of all people. And to accomplish that, Jesus went and proclaimed the gospel, the good news of the kingdom in many places, eventually heading toward the cross where he would give completely of himself that the sin of all people, the greatest and the most serious problem that we face, our own sinfulness that we can't fix on our own, Jesus fixed on the cross for us. That is his ultimate purpose, that is his ultimate goal, that is why he came, and that's what he's about to do. That's the task that he has at hand. And yes, it's so easy for, to get sidetracked and distracted by all the, all the other important things that he was doing, that the disciples begin to, began to think that that's all he came for. They didn't realize until it was happening that he came also to forgive sin, to earn the power of forgiveness in their life, and to open for them, because of that forgiveness, eternal life for all who will believe on him. So. Is it okay to ask Jesus for healing? Yes. As a matter of fact, he encourages us to do that in the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. 
Is it okay for, to, to ask Jesus for relief from the effects, the mental illness and the, and the depression and all those? Yes! Jesus tells us to do so and invites us to come to Him and to our Heavenly Father, calling just like, it, like you would call your, your, your father, dear Daddy, Daddy, I'm hurting, help me. But we always need to remember that there is more to what Jesus has come to do than just that kind of healing. Jesus wants to heal your heart, your spirit, and make true life possible for you in the forgiveness of sins that He has won, and true life possible as He leads us to the eternal glory that He has planned for us, for us in heaven, and for that wondrous blessing that we have, that He has stored up for all who will believe. And so as we go through our lives, as we, do our, as we face the issues of the day, I would invite you to let Jesus do his job. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God that goes beyond all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. We sing, Rise My Soul to Watch and Pray.
rise for prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we pray that you would continue to be with us day by day. We thank you for all that Jesus has done for us. We thank you that we have the privilege of coming to him with all our needs in prayer and supplication. We ask that you would help us to recognize that Jesus has come for all things great, for even those that are greater than our day-to-day -day needs. We pray especially that you would help us to see his power for forgiveness and pray for that and your eternal kingdom to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would send out more workers into the harvest field who will proclaim the good news of the kingdom, drawing more and more people into that kingdom, proclaiming the good news of salvation, that more and more people may believe and believing have eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that you would be with our mission partners at Trinity Lutheran Church for the Deaf in Sioux Falls, that you would give them the strength that they need and the, the faith that they need to step forward in faith, bringing the good news to the people of their community and others, and reaching out with that good news, that this, this group of people who are, who many of whom uh, do not, have not heard the good news of Jesus, may come to hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would provide for the needs of all who are impacted by COVID-19, those who are, have uh, succumbed to the illness directly, we ask that you would place your hand of healing upon them, and those who are feeling the side effects, whether it be job loss, or isolation, or whatever issue they are dealing with. We pray that you would strengthen them, help them to uh, come through this uh, time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These things and whatever else you would have us ask, grant for the sake of your dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated as we sing, Abide, O Dearest Jesus.
Go in peace and serve the Lord.